Hello, uh, guys, are we good? Yeah. Yes! Me too! I'm seeing someone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm winning at life. Thank you. Thank you. Sort of seeing someone. Um, he dumped me. <laughs> no, but then he undumped me. And what he doesn't realise is you can only dump me once. Then it's marriage or death. <laughs> now, guys, this material is about um, a year old, so... Um, <laughs> He's dead now. <laughs> uh, no, no, don't mourn him. He was a cunt. Um, <laughs> he, he was a political journalist and he put me on hold while he wrote a book about Brexit, which was ironic because I realised he was, in fact, Brexiting me. Um, you know, in that he wanted out, but he didn't know how to negotiate it and that no one had a clue what was going on. And I said, look, with me, you're either in or you're out. <laughs> Yeah, not really. I was like, soft Brexit me. <laughs> you, you can leave, but you don't have to leave, Lee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you can still retain access to the single market. No, dignity's a funny thing, isn't it? Um, no, but guys, I think dating's hard. Dating's hard because there's lots of rules, isn't it? It's like, don't be too keen. Don't be too drunk. Don't add him on Facebook. Don't follow him on Instagram or on Twitter. Don't endorse them on LinkedIn, you know? Don't give them a two-together rail card. Don't sleep with them after the first drink. You know? Don't call him. That's a funny one, isn't it? Don't call him. Even if you call him and you don't say anything. Yeah. Even then. Even if you call him from an anonymous number... And all you do is heavy breathe down the phone. <laughs> well, he's going, hello, who is this, please? I just want to enjoy a quiet night with my wife and kids. Why, why, every night, every night. <laughs> yeah, yeah she, she knows. Um, it's not, it's not, but luckily, guys, I mean, I don't follow rules. I follow dreams. Thank you, thank you. And, um, if you take away anything from my set other than, oh, another woman, um, I, I hope, thank you, I, I hope that it's that. Always, always follow your dreams unless you're Donald Trump. <laughs> I wish someone had crushed his dreams early on. Guys, don't you think Donald Trump is a bit like the marshmallow man in Ghostbusters? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in the way that someone dreamt him up and went, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Oh, I thought that'd be funny. Um, I used to worry that I had a three-date personality in that, you know, I had my funny stories and my strong opinions, but only three dates worth. <laughs> and, yeah, and then my personality would expire. <laughs> and then I'd just sort of repeat myself like some malfunctioning robot. I'm like a pack of prawns, guys. I'm fun and I'm filthy, but I go off really quickly. <laughs> yeah. I, I, cause, <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, I, I feel your pain. I don't understand why someone shout out Donald Trump after that. Um, no, but, you know, but because of a three-day personality, uh, you know, it's like consumed within three dates. I can't remember my punchline. It's fine. It's gone. It's gone, guys. I think that people who say, uh, the thing about me is what you see is what you get, should be not seen and not got. <laughs> it's very annoying. It's very annoying. Uh, as, I'm from a big family. Is anyone else in here from a big family? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? You have to, like, talk over people a lot. So I'm from a big family, and recently we went on the first family holiday in years, and I was quite nervous. I thought there was going to be arguments and things like that. And actually, there was only one argument the whole holiday, and that was about my brother's one-eyed French bulldog, Serge. Because he kept shagging all the children. Yeah. So my sister got very upset, and she, you know, she told Serge off. And then my sister-in-law got very defensive and she was like, can you not tell my dog off, please? He's disabled. He's over there in the bar. What, Serge? There 
was no dog in the audience. I don't understand. I mean, there's no point heckling me because I'm very deaf, like an old person. Okay. Um, no, but my sister was like, my sister was like, but I wouldn't let a disabled man shag my children either. <laughs> So that's my family material. Thank you. I never started my watch. I have no idea how long I'm doing. Okay. Um, guys, so I went to, uh, in sex education at school, we were put into two groups uh, when I was at school. We were put into the boys' group and the girls' group. And in my group, um, the girls' group, um, <laughs> okay, our teacher said, she said, now girls, because I, I grew up in Somerset. I used to have a Somerset accent, but it got beaten out of me. Um, now girls, how many of you here have ever called a boy a wanker? Me. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I won't be cross because chances are he probably is one. <laughs> now look, I don't know what was going on in the boys section, but I like to think it was, now boys, the staff know you're wankers. <laughs> and now the girls of 8C know it too. But they never told us women wanked. So for years I thought I was a lone wanker. I mean, guys, not, not that I really knew how to wank back then. I just used to squeeze my legs together like my vagina was a champagne bottle. <laughs> and, and, and everyone knows that's not how you open champagne. Okay. So this led to a lot of shame, um, which was exacerbated by a few instances, like once when I tried to um, look up masturbation on my mum's computer and accidentally downloaded this virus. So the screen was filled with, like, flashing boobs. And she came in and she was like, what's happened here? And I was like, I don't know, I don't know. I was Googling puppies, puppies, all sexy puppies. Um, I did this set the other week and my brother was in the audience and he went, I got the blame for that. <laughs> <laughs> you learn things when your family's in. Um, but the other thing I used to do was I used to go to the bookshop and I used to go to the erotic section and I used to like read a, a naughty book and I used to sort of hope that no one knew what I was reading. And one day I was there and I was reading something innocent like Pride and Penetration. And, um, <laughs> and I, got, uh, I got tapped on the shoulder and, and I turned around and it was a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> yeah, it's a true story. And the thing about Jehovah's Witnesses is they're a bit like vampires. But well, they are, in that they have to be invited in. So I think, you know, they just, they, it was great. They could just walk in to the bookstore. Anyway, she tapped me on the shoulder and she started talking about God and I started to panic because I thought she'd seen my book. What would she think? You know, I thought about trying to put the book back in the shelf without her noticing, but I was worried that I'd sort of push it in too much and there'd be an ejaculation of dirty books <laughs> over her head. I thought of running away, but I thought, oh, it just looks cowardly. So sometimes you've just got to be honest, don't you? So she said to me, do you know Jesus? And I said, yes. <laughs> but I find his book really hard to masturbate to. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have no idea how long I've done. Um, guys, don't you think the word celebration sounds a lot like masturbation? <laughs> isn't it? And which is kind of, does someone say no? <laughs> which is kind of what it is, because it's a celebration for yourself, by yourself. <laughs> and like any celebration for yourself, by yourself, it can be fun in a, oh, a naughty way. Or it can be fun in a, oh, I'm so alone way. <laughs> Start strong, end strong, that's what I always say. <laughs> Guys, I've been Rosie Holt, you'd be very nice. Thank you. <laughs>